Good morning. Today we're going to discuss problems involving thermal energy. So here's example one. How much heat energy is required to warm ice of mass 700 grams at an initial temperature of minus 10 degrees Celsius to a liquid state at 15 degrees Celsius, final temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. The latent heat of melting for ice is 333 kilojoules per kilogram. So that's the first example we're going to look at. A little later on in this video, we'll discuss how we get this final answer to one significant digit. Second example is the following. A piece of metal, initial temperature is 11 degrees Celsius, is submerged into a liquid, initially at a temperature of 61 degrees Celsius. The mass of the metal is double that of the liquid. The liquid has a specific heat capacity that is triple that of the metal. Determine the equilibrium temperature. So before we tackle these two problems, we're going to review specific heat capacity and latent heat. So C is a symbol used to represent specific heat capacity for a substance. The unit is joules per kilogram degree Celsius. For example, for a piece of nickel, the specific heat capacity is 540 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. But what does this actually mean? Imagine we had one kilogram of nickel. And imagine that we want to increase its temperature from 22 degrees Celsius to 23 degrees Celsius. So we want to increase its temperature by one degree Celsius. Then the amount of energy that needs to be transferred to the nickel is 540 joules. Assuming the energy transfer is 100% efficient. That's what 540 joules per kilogram degree Celsius means. If we want to increase the temperature by 2 degrees Celsius, then it would be 540 plus 540, or 1,080 joules of energy is required. Here is the formula that sums up specific heat capacity. Q is the amount of energy measured in joules. M is the mass of the substance in kilograms. Delta T is the change in temperature when energy is added. It's positive or removed. Delta T is negative. There's the formula, T2 minus T1, where T2 represents final temperature and T1 the initial temperature. And finally, C is the symbol used to represent specific heat capacity for a substance. So what about a change of state? What's the physics that represents that? Well, during a change of state, the temperature remains constant. That's very important to remember. So for example, let's say that the latent heat of fusion or melting for nickel is 293 kilojoules per kilogram. What does this actually mean? Once again, imagine we have one kilogram of nickel and imagine that it's at its melting point. Well, to melt the nickel completely would require exactly 293 kilojoules of energy, assuming the process is 100% efficient. So that's what it means. If we have two kilograms of nickel, we want to melt it completely, then it required double the amount of energy. 293 kilojoules plus 293 kilojoules. All right, let's go back to our example. How much heat energy is required to warm ice of mass 700 grams, that's initially at negative 10 degrees Celsius, to a liquid state at a final temperature of 15 degrees Celsius? And we're told the latent heat of melting for ice. So we start off with ice at minus 10 degrees Celsius. And we have to warm it up to zero degrees Celsius. We're changing the temperature of ice. We're increasing the temperature of ice. So we're going to use the formula Q equals MC delta T. The mass, as highlighted, is 700 grams. And the specific heat capacity for ice is 2,220 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. Notice the unit. 
joules per kilogram degree Celsius, whereas the mass is in grams. So we'll have to convert. Converting the mass by dividing by 1,000, that's 0 0.7 kilograms. 0 0.7 kilograms is 700 grams. Our specific heat capacity and 10 degrees Celsius because we're raising the temperature from minus 10 to zero. And so we end up getting this amount of energy for the first part of the problem. This is the energy required to warm the ice to its melting point. Next, we're gonna melt the ice. Notice that the temperature does not change while melting. This is important. Once again, the mass is still 700 grams, and the latent heat of melting for ice is 333 kilojoules per kilogram. Notice the mass has to once again be converted, and to get joules, we're going to multiply 333 by 1,000, hence the reason why we've written 333,000 here. And notice the energy, 233,100 joules. It takes a lot of energy to change the state of a substance in comparison to warming that substance. Finally, we're now going to take that water, which is at zero degrees Celsius, and warm it up to 15 degrees Celsius. Again, there is now a change in temperature. And so we use this formula, Q equals MC delta T. There's our mass, notice, that this time we are not using the specific heat capacity of ice. Instead, we are using the specific heat capacity of water, 4,190 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. Please note that. The temperature has risen by 15 degrees Celsius from zero to 15. And there's our amount of energy required to warm the water. And so adding these energies together, the total energy to one significant digit is 300,000 joules. Example two, a piece of metal, initial temperature is 11 degrees Celsius, is submerged into a liquid, which is at an initial temperature of 61 degrees Celsius. The mass of the metal is double that of the liquid. The liquid has a specific heat capacity that is triple that of the metal. Determine the equilibrium temperature. So we start off with our metal, 11 degrees Celsius, and our liquid at 61 degrees Celsius. And what we're going to do is take the metal, submerge it into the liquid, and then the question is, what's the new temperature? What's the temperature that everything will settle at? Clearly, when you put a cold object into a warm liquid, the overall temperature will decrease. So we should get an answer somewhere between 11 and 61. For this, we're going to create a table. And the first piece of information is that the mass of the metal is double that of the liquid. Mass of the metal is double that of the liquid. So for our table, we're going to fill in that the mass of the metal, we'll call it 2m, and the liquid, we'll just call it m. Next, the liquid has a specific heat capacity that is triple that of the metal. So the liquid, its specific heat capacity is three times that of the metal. Well, we'll use the symbol C, and we'll write under the metal column C, however, under the liquid, 3C. Initial temperature is 11 degrees and 61 degrees Celsius. And the question is, after you put this metal into the liquid, what's the final temperature? We'll call that X. So we're gonna use the formula or the idea that the heat energy of the metal is equal to negative that of the heat energy of the liquid. Now the metal is going to gain energy. How do we know the metal is going to gain energy? 
Well, it's going to gain energy because it's going to get warmer. The liquid is going to lose energy. It's going to lose energy to the metal. Why do we know that? Well, because the liquid is going to get cooler. This equation is really a statement of energy conservation. The implication in this equation is that no energy is lost due to the environment. Now we're going to use our formula for Q, mc delta t. Focusing first on the metal and that column there. We're going to substitute those numbers, 2m, c, 11, and x, into that side of the equation for metal. For m, we put 2m. For c, we simply write c. And then for the change in temperature, we write x minus 11. Final temperature, subtract initial temperature. Now let's focus on the liquid. We're going to take those numbers in that column and substitute it into that side of the equation that I've highlighted. And that's what we end up with. We've substituted m, 3c, and x minus 61, x being the final temperature. All right, now we're left with some math to work on. Well, because we have mass and specific heat on each side of the equation, those terms cancel. And we're left with the following equation. 2x minus 22 equals negative 3x plus 183. Rearranging, we end up with 5x equals 205, or x equals 41 degrees Celsius. The answer makes sense, because like we mentioned earlier, the answer has to be somewhere between 11 and 61 degrees Celsius. It can't be a number less than 11, and it can't be a number greater than 61. That just wouldn't make any sense. So, I hope you've enjoyed these two examples, and more importantly, I hope you learned something today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.